Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel and some very, very special guests. These are my friends, Lucy and Lena. I normally say Lena and Lucy, but you're in this um, direction. Yeah, so. I'm gonna be the daddy. Yeah. I'm, I, it's Lena and Lucy, obviously. <laughs> Sorry, but you <laughs> sat in this order. So you may recognize these lovely ladies from their own shit that they've got going on on YouTube, but also an entire decade ago, an era ago, we hosted a podcast together called Banging Book Club and it was a when time when we were but spring chicken <laughs> there was a spring in our stuff. so context we've been friends for around 10 years and I now have a child and <sighs> we'll get on to that what a traitor <laughs> We're supposed to be the most important person in your life, Hannah. Oops. <laughs> she felt the need to make another Oops. one. <laughs> but yeah, I wanted to do an old school collab with you guys and talk about friendships and dynamics of that. When you've got one of you or some of you have kids and some of you don't and different life choices and all of that. So do you want to chat about where you're currently at so the people know like where each of us are coming from, I guess. I have a toddler. That's we didn't my situation fit in this order, but I think there is a spectrum and I'm on the other end of the spectrum <laughs> where I'm like absolutely not, never have, never will, never could. Potentially. Potentially. <laughs> Potentially yeah. never could. I am in the middle around when COVID happened. I was 26 and I freaked out because I didn't want babies yet. Mm. Like I hadn't even, the nurturing part of me had not kicked in. And weirdly, I've done a bit of work with kids since then. And actually I am very much chilled out about it all. If it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm reassured at my capacity to love. Oh, <laughs> that's quite beautiful. I feel okay. But also are you in the situation now where you're not like actively trying and you're not oh, like, God, I no. don't want a kid right now? Oh God, no. Well, this is a very like zeitgeisty, I guess, conversation. Like we, we booked this in before, ahead of the time. But since then, there's been a New Yorker article that came out that was doing the rounds amongst my mum friends about like friendships not surviving people having a baby and then this substack that i'm subscribed to also did a piece on like how to kid proof friendships so people are talking about Ooh. this i thought we would chat about like our experiences and then also got a bunch of questions from insta the were the articles positive or negative because i am not in said mum circles and have not seen said new york well, article it's all just kind of very like yeah the reality is that your friendships will change there's like the two sides of it of like it being really difficult for the people who are parents feeling isolated and feeling FOMO or not included or not understood and then the feeling of the non-parents of being like deprioritized or left behind or there's obviously like different experiences of that as well because like in your instance you're child free by choice but then there's other people who are child free not by choice and that adds a whole other layer of things when it comes to like insecurity and jealousy and like you know if you have a really hard time with your fertility as well like how does that feel then for you to be around your friends and your friends kids and all of that like that's like a whole other layer of things and like I know for me it having taken a year for us to conceive Rowan and even though like Rowan exists now like I have a child I find people's pregnancy announcements really difficult especially when they say it happened straight away that triggers me even though I have my child now like yeah that's mm. so interesting do you think that because there's an element of like unfairness or do you feel like it's kind of like there's a weird kind of competitiveness or is it just like a kind of oh it, you don't know how hard it is for a lot of people is it like the yeah kind of like it's frustration like that people aren't aware I don't know not that they're not aware like I don't think that's necessary it's just like oh my god I'm so happy for you and I'm jealous like I think the root feeling is just like wish that could have been fucking me like yeah. how annoying because being pregnant is a medical state and therefore there's a bit of a roll in the dice as to like how it works it's the same mm. as like a lot of things to do with bodies and health isn't it where it's like i wish that was me i have got a fully functioning asshole yeah, <laughs> yeah. that isn't malfunctioning on me <laughs> do you resent me for that no every time i go, time I go to the toilet i go wow well, hannah i dropped an amazing poo just then do you think fuck you <laughs> i've got a stoma yeah in that case no but it pops up when it comes to I, I think I, people can feel that feeling in loads of different situations yeah. is kind of what I'm saying so I don't think you should feel bad about feeling that way yeah. oh no you should never feel mm. bad and about feeling that and it's absolutely not something that I would project onto someone if they were like telling me that they were pregnant mm. like yeah. I'd be like oh my god amazing like, it's also like so if it was an amazing thing for them yeah <laughs> 
it's so indicative of the way that we share and receive that news now, which is primarily on social media, mm. where you are getting, even if it is a detailed post about someone getting pregnant, is still maybe a paragraph, maybe two. Yeah. And I suppose like in before social media, you held people individually, maybe, unless you're like one of those mm. annoying people who facts everyone, <laughs> which if you yeah. were. I feel like you tailor your news to every individual person, whether it was like consciously or subconsciously, say it in a different way. Recently had a situation where I found out about a pregnancy of someone I know and initially was just absolutely shell-shocked about it and then later found out that it was just this horrendous journey. So all that bitterness Mm. I'd felt about it feeling sprung upon me, this news, I then Mm. realised very quickly this had been a very different journey to what I'd initially perceived it to be. That's interesting as well because that also like goes to show how little people share of the fertility journey publicly whereas it just like the pregnancy announcement happens and you're like oh I didn't even know you were trying Mm -hmm. whereas I've found that I've made a very conscious effort with my like close friends and more kind of like as and when people ask like you know if people ask like oh where are you at with thinking about like number two I'll be honest with them about where we're at but yeah but I don't think it's talked about that openly so then yeah pregnancies can feel like surprise yeah (laughs) and you're very you've always been very transparent and I actually find that I really appreciate that Mm. because I feel like I can meet you where you're at if that's what you want. Because I can't meet you where you're at anymore, I'm afraid. (laughs) There's no going back. I can't be undone. I think we've all probably had complicated feelings about people having babies, but in the same way that I think when we're younger, like there's no part of our friends' lives that are private to us. Like we tell each other everything, especially when you're in school today, at school all the time, or you're at uni, or you're just seeing each other all the time, texting all the time. There's no part of your life private. And I feel like once somebody gets into a serious relationship, that becomes private then. You can't know every argument they have. Like you can't, yeah. you can't know all the things that led up to somebody maybe like getting married or like the, the problems with it. You might just see the happy side of it. And pregnancy is another one where there's so much that becomes private, which is kind of okay. Cause you don't want to share it with everybody. I think for me, it's been a symbol of like, wow, like friendship isn't the same when you're older and that's okay. Mm-hmm. But we're just not like in each other's pockets all the time. Like when I was at uni, I used to sleep in my housemates' beds and they sleep in <laughs> yeah. mine. Like we yeah. were so, physically close all the time but when you don't see your friends every day like you do when you're younger it means that those moments when you are seeing them and sometimes it is more like a one-on-one or a one-on-two situation rather than like as a big group you end up doing catch-ups and it can be really exhausting to share the exact same catch-up information Mm. at every fucking brunch you go to so actually like fair enough that some of your mates like don't know every little thing Mm. that is going on yeah I've become so much more aware of the passing of time between the times we see each other Mm. because of Rowan's growing up. Mm. I remember maybe like last time we saw each other seeing Rowan as well and realizing Rowan was saying words and babbling and like Mm -hmm. his growth made me aware that we had not seen each other for about three months. And that is scary. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know. It's like a physical marker of it. Yeah, I no longer feel able to swear in front of Rowan, which is greatly inconvenient (laughs) for me, but I really believe that he can hear me. Oh, he he (laughs) knows exactly what I'm saying. Yeah, no, he definitely definitely understands everything and that's something that I'm now realizing like shit and like <laughs> I'd also a bit of reassurance as well you are immensely easy to hang out with with child thank you, thank I, you. The, not everyone is like this but also that is so dependent on their child and their personal needs yeah. as well oh God, like yeah. you know no one can help if their child is really needs a hell of a lot yeah. of attention and is quite difficult but I would also be lying if there wasn't like a bit of me like the ego side of me that when you guys say like oh actually like I've lost some friends to kids but like you're different there, there is a little bit of me that's like I'm special how it is not like other moms. I'm I know but there's like a part of me that hates that but also is like mm, yes Great. But part of that is your approach to it. And I think something that I really like about you is that you're like, yeah, it's going to be hard. I knew it was going to be hard. I've signed up for this. This is motherhood. This is yeah. what it is. Yeah. yeah. It's not what it's not. But you're allowed to I complain. Would like to yeah, complain. yeah, yeah. No, you're, no, you're allowed <laughs> to complain. But I feel like you went into it really knowing what you were getting into. And that's partly because you were maybe a bit older and you knew. And also just because you'd researched it a lot. And you were How like, I? I just no. knew. <laughs> I, the thing is, I knew that things would be different and things would change. I didn't know the details. But yeah, mm. I, was, I, just, I was prepared for 
for all of the sacrifices. And it's a sign of maturity and knowing yourself as mm. well. Can I add a little, not devil's advocate, but also an element of it that plays a role mm. is nursery and childcare. We get to have one-on-one -on -one time with you yeah. because of your childcare setup. And yeah. we also get to spend time with Rowan because of your childcare setup. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like the luxury of getting you just you and then also getting to spend quality time yeah. with Rowan. And it's not just we the childcare setup, it's my work setup. Yes. So like we're colleagues, we find excuses, work excuses to hang out with one another. And then, yeah, because I work for myself, it means that I can take a Wednesday to come yeah. to the Midlands to yeah. visit you with Rowan. Like that meant so, a lot to me. Basically, on my birthday this year, Hannah found out that I didn't actually have any plans on my birthday. Trash. Um, <laughs> So she got the train up to the Midlands with her child to just hang out with me and walk around with me. We basically, I got off the train, Rowan was due a nap, and we just walked around the town whilst Rowan slept. I've never walked so much. <laughs> that was, was amazing. That was our hanging out. Yeah. yeah. But you were like, I'm coming. Yes, yeah. it would be annoying and hard, yeah. but I'm coming. Right, I want to guide this conversation with some like specific questions from lovely Instagram followers, a lot of whom have, you know, watched us over the years. So, you know, are parasocially curious to know what's going on in the friendship. Okay, so this one's like a broader question because they've said, kids and etc. aside, do you find it kind of amazing that you've stayed friends in general as you got older? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow, so you I... little faith. I like these girls will be around for two years and then I'll kick them to the curb. Just um, in general. Still here. <laughs> Why won't they leave? In general, I am continually amazed that my relationships look broadly the same as they mm. did a decade ago. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I am so lucky. As I had can. a huge falling out with two of my best friends when I was 21. And I and this is a normal experience for a lot of people, right? But it gave me that instability feeling of like, oh, you can think you can know someone really well, but mm. then one thing can change or someone you know, could get pregnant. <laughs> And it can all switch. But like, I don't know about you, but all of my YouTube related relationships have remained vastly the same. Is that good or bad? Like, as in like, do we just stay more consistent people because we have an online brand and we've really thought about it? Or do we just know ourselves better because we stare at ourselves all the time? We've really thought about who we are and then we can find more compatible friendships. Or is it because we share a lot of our life online so that we you can catch up with somebody without actually catching up with them? Because sometimes I can watch you on both of your videos, yeah. kind of know generally what's going on with your life so when we actually see each other in person we get down to the nitty gritty and we don't have to do the reporting yeah so i think we have more valuable time because of that what's Maybe your social media is a good thing but then because the things that we share with each other are things that we wouldn't share online yeah, oh, yeah. So, so then that so makes the relationship say. special you know yeah, when you do your thing. like last bit of the year goals yes i always watch those my home stretch goals your home stretch goals i love those videos <laughs> and again i feel like yeah. i'm up to date suddenly on where hannah's at with work love that love mm. that i also think like we met at a time where and we were all moving to London, doing the YouTube thing. You were still a student, but doing the mm. YouTube thing. And mm. so our social lives at that time were like expanding, 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 because you're like meeting so many new people. And we just stuck. There was mm. so many people that we like met yes. during that time that were just like fleeting acquaintances, friendships, or like whatever. But this just stuck. But you guys were the people I felt closest to at that time as well, mm -hmm. I will say. Do There's you... lots of people that fell away because there was nothing in common. <laughs> <laughs> ultimately yeah. do you think us having a podcast together helped us solidify our friendship i no. think us oh sorry i think us In having yeah <laughs> I think oh. us having a work project that gave us an excuse to hang out helped mm. because yeah, whilst maybe the podcast itself didn't solidify it, like the conversations we specifically had on the podcast, but every time we recorded a podcast, we then hung out afterwards and got food and you know, like we I made- Got a, drunk, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like a- Most of the day. <laughs> It was like, okay, we're gonna record this podcast and then we're just like hanging out as friends. So it was, you know, it's hard, I think, especially yeah. with London friendships as well, because we've never really lived in the same area of London. Like when you lived in London, no, that was, was that closest. blissful year. Do you remember when I was in Finsbury Park? Oh yeah. There was that one year where we were all close enough yes. that like I could walk I to your old house. That. The closest we've ever been is like a 45 minute walk from each other, yeah. which mm. you know, in London terms is neighbors. <laughs> but like during the lockdown, I was like, oh, I'm walking to Hannah's. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, <laughs> why do you think it didn't make us closer? We never had a relationship where we would see each other super frequently, like you would with mm. housemates mm -hmm. or a more residential oh, friendship. Friendship. Together. Yeah. So I think, <laughs> I think that's a positive because it taught us from 
from the very beginning how to maintain this friendship with a level of distance and mm-hmm. also set the expectations right at the beginning as well so yeah. we were never gonna see each other like multiple times a week other than there was like one period where we did more out of again like a work necessity YouTube would have events and yeah yeah we'd see each other like other people were organizing that for us yeah and we yeah, just attended yeah. the same stuff rather than us planning it but together. it's not like you know sometimes you see someone three times a week and then it drops off a cliff when they maybe have a child or they move away we've always been navigating through a certain amount of distance yeah it's always been self-motivated do we assume that kidless friends wouldn't want to meet with you and kid even if they haven't said this i have friends who have kids who assume i don't want to see them with their kid Mm. and i have to reaffirm that i do want to see them with their child as outrageous an assumption as like i wouldn't want to meet dan because (laughs) dan's an important person in your life and while i would like to also sometimes hang out without him and have our secret friendship (laughs) that's what the relationship is do you know what i mean there's things that i would tell you that i wouldn't tell dan yeah but i like hanging out with dan and dan's really important in your life so why wouldn't i want to hang out with him yeah. absolutely i he's agree like saying about rowan although he's not quite as talkative yet nobody well, i feel like we're already getting to know each other he's <laughs> woken me up with a hangover he's crawled on my head while i was hungover so i feel like that is an intimate <laughs> when was this i got really drunk at the women's prize <laughs> so, and then i passed out in rowan's room <gasps> that's so funny <laughs> and oh then he God. crawled on my face in the morning like seven in the morning like <laughs> And oh, I was like, one. I'm going to send the child into wake her up. If it was a necessity, of course, I'd be so happy to always see you with Rowan. But it's a nice treat that I get just you as well as you and Rowan. It's the balance. And yeah. for me, that is important as well. Like, I need the flexibility to be able to, like, have my child with me and socialize. But then also, sometimes I'm just like, I just want to fucking focus on an adult conversation yeah. and not be, like, thinking, where is this child gone? Yeah, completely. I think as well, it's easy to hang out with you and some of my other mum friends as well because they are still still themselves when they're mothering and I yes. think there's an element of uh, formative mothering who is mothering this person that people feel like they have to become a different person when mm. they're parenting which I don't think is healthy but hey I don't have children who, who say <laughs> but I feel like you are Hannah but parenting but that's how so I, I feel, feel about like myself you. as well like I don't know what a mum feels like I don't I literally still am just like what does it mean to be a mum I don't feel like a mum I just feel like me plus a child <laughs> this is something is but this is, is the thing and there are some some people that I've met and I'm meeting more I don't have that many friends or family with children but as I get older I meet more people who believe that the moment they have their child that is a new chapter in their life and they themselves are changing to mother Mm -hmm. Um, they make a conscious decision you know it's like it's like deciding your aesthetic is cottage core like it really is like a big shift (laughs) mum but a lot of the mums that I I feel very mum core today I mean vibey outfit we love it it's also very like Bella Twilight oh yeah it's It's very Bella Swan I remember listening to a podcast that was talking talking about what it means to like feel a certain age and we have this idea of like what a 40 year old looks like and acts like and so we get confused when we start to reach 40 or whatever age it is and we're like that's not me I don't fit that thing but actually the age itself is the thing that adapts to whoever is that age rather than you fitting to what this idea of the age is and what you were just saying is like ah actually that's how I feel about parenthood and mumhood because actually there isn't this just like picture perfect like idea of what a mum is and what a mum looks like and now that I am a mum I have to be that it's like whatever I am that's what a mum is yes yeah. that's it you're the, you, you, you're you Hannah with kid that's yeah. what makes it that's it <laughs> yeah literally Dance. and if you'd suddenly become I am mum Hannah we would probably not have the same relationship because if you'd rude yeah, yeah it's fine <laughs> not that, not that yeah yeah Hannah. yeah we'd be we are <laughs> new vibes I am in like a recovery group and I beforehand I've never worked full time in a work environment so I wasn't really meeting people who were older than me Mm. like most of the people in our industry are really young and also I don't spend much time with them sad because I work from home sad and on my own Um, (laughs) your existence is just sad (laughs) I'm just so sad but now I've met so many thought about having a child constant company (laughs) (laughs) she's getting commissioned don't listen to her the links in the description yeah. uh, motherhood <laughs> is a pyramid scheme pass it on <laughs> you're not wrong <laughs> but I've met so sorry I've met so many cool people in their 30s 40s and 50s who have chosen many different paths in life mm. but are all city dwellers and I realise that really what I have in common with people and what I, I vibe with is people who Living stay in the city, city. yeah <laughs> like genuinely if, sorry Lena. I think I would str- I think I'd struggle more <laughs> with friendships where people are like in Lena. <laughs> <laughs> The roasting won't end. 
You know what? There are people in the Midlands. It's not. It's not. I don't live in a field. There are people out there, you know. But if you've God, gone, Londoners. this you is know, the bigger rift, not me having a child. <laughs> yeah, it's the, I... the north south divide that's really getting us. But like the people who stayed in T Wells, bought a house in Staplehurst, and got married aren't the people that I have really strong friendships yeah. with or identify <laughs> with. <laughs> Whereas the people who are kind of, you know, having kids in the city are the people I'm like, oh yeah, all people who aren't. I'm yeah. like, oh, I, I see you and you're city still. All right, city-ish. guys. Yeah, you are. We've gone <laughs> through two questions. I'm sorry. There's so many more to go. Let's be quick. <laughs> Would you let your childless friend babysit your kid? This is a question for me. Would I? Not at this stage, but I feel like at some point in the future, I might. You never know. But maybe by, by that point, we're paying babysitters. Who knows? I would like to say now and just put it out there. I would love, to be trained up to look after someone's baby. I know I'm not qualified enough yet, but should you ever want, like a, when mm-hmm. Rowan's a bit older, you want a date night, I would love to spend like a half evening with you where you teach me the damn routine. You teach me yep. the thing and then I do it. <laughs> Absolutely. Because I know I'm not, you need to see me in action. Yeah, the only people who have babysat Rowan are his grandparents. And they're, other than me and Dan and his childmind are probably the people who see him the most. I have think my uh, attitudes to babysitting have changed because I grew up in a close church environment so I have been babysitting Mm -hmm. since I was about 14. (laughs) People have just left me with their babies and I've done it. Now I'm older, I'm like, I would like to take a first aid course before I look after somebody who can't tell me what's wrong. But if somebody forced me to do it, I could easily do it because I'm very used to being around baby kids and I've worked with kids as well in a professional capacity. I just (laughs) wouldn't (laughs) now. Yeah, Yeah, because I'm aware of the dangers of it. And also I think that like the parent-babysitter relationship isn't one that I I want to have with my friends. That makes total sense. I would rather have that with my parents or an actual babysitter. Okay, this person has said, I feel like I'm constantly having catch-ups but want DMCs, but how? DMCs, deep, meaningful conversations. Have you forgotten what DMC means? I don't have a name, Rum, D- Rum DMC. <laughs> I feel like how DMC did that, How did that pass you by? Yeah. I don't have TikTok, I don't know what No, DMC was like language from when yeah. I was a teenager. Well, yeah. we were, teenagers the well, same we were seeing each other at least every week. <laughs> oh, okay, I've forgotten. Here's a controversial opinion but we've already like kind of said that this is what's worked for us be public people on the internet and share all your catch-up information publicly well not necessarily publicly you could have a private instagram where you share it with like your close people am i allowed to say you have a finster Uh, yeah i have a well it's not fake it's real it's definitely me but it's just private (laughs) yeah so love it we can see the private side of your life on instagram as well as the public side of your life yeah because it's exhausting like doing all those catch-ups so i mean use technology to your advantage and just blast the catch up stuff to the people who you want to know that and then when you actually see each other in person you can you skip can jump it. into stuff and be yeah. like oh yeah. I saw you did this thing on Thursday yeah. tell me about like, it there like... is a use for it I mm. think yeah. also there is a certain amount of maintenance you do have to do with friendships like you can't expect to get into DMZ territory if you are seeing someone once a year for two hours yeah I think you have to accept that you do need a little and it doesn't have to be much more maintenance but maybe you're spending a whole afternoon with someone yeah or you're having a sleepover once a year or maybe mm-hmm. there has to or maybe you're doing calls you know really long voice notes or really yeah <laughs> or, or maintenance with voice notes there is a certain yeah. degree of maintenance that any friendship no matter whether you have a child or not does require yeah. but it doesn't have to be that same level that you might have had in your early 20s one of my best friends recently had a kid and we used to do bi-weekly catch-ups on the phone like we'd schedule it in mm. that was what we did when she had a baby I was obviously like we don't need to do that for a bit that's fine <laughs> like you're off the hook mate don't worry yeah. but I did sent her random 10 minute voice notes that had no theme <laughs> and she could just listen to whenever she wanted yeah. do you know what I mean uh-huh. and I was like you don't need to reply to these occasionally she would send me one back but I was just like by the way this is what I would have said in our phone call oh. blah, 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 blah. random shitty thoughts from my I account. love a low obligation voice note yeah and I really mm. enjoy recording them because I love the sound of my own voice I like that <laughs> and one thing that I've started doing is when I'm hanging out with Rowan I'll just be like which auntie or uncle do we want to call today and I'll just like oh. randomly FaceTime people and maybe I'll get five minute chat with Rowan also being like hi 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 and that I really like because it is those like moments of just like touch points Mm. so then it means that there's more opportunity for a DMC if we then have the time but it's just like yeah if we don't see each other for a few months but if you get like a random FaceTime from me then like that's just it's just a nice little like hey 
we're still here. Yeah. I remember you. Another I love thing that. I do with when I because I've got a few friends that I see probably every other month. What we do when we can see each other because they've both got really really busy jobs. Lol, I have the least busy job. <laughs> like I'm like I'm the teenager of the group. And um, we have an agenda. So before mm. we meet, we write down in our group like everything we want to talk about. That's like oh here are all the things, and we make sure during the weekend we're spending together that we all hit on those things. And sometimes you don't want to bring it up in the moment because you're like oh, it's a bit vulnerable, it's a bit heavy. But if you've already said in the group chat that you do want to talk about it, then people can call you on your bullshit and be like right you wanted to talk about your shit boss at work let's do it now what's Go- going on we well, like, kind of your dad's do Ill. let's talk about it i love this we and do that but with our work life we when can, we, we do, yeah. do a bit of that. banging yeah. alumni club mm. whatever we call bang, banging business club we come with an agenda obviously yeah. more so because of timekeeping reasons but it is very helpful isn't it yeah speaking of timekeeping <laughs> sorry how to navigate a massive change in your social life when child free and all of your friends become parents i don't know if this is controversial i am being careful about who i take on as a new friend but ideally if they are a new friend I need them to be child free because not because I don't I've just I fulfilled my quota of people who potentially want children or have children I also need some people in my life who do not want children yeah, they say this in the New Yorker article don't they yeah. they say this or Chelsea Fagan one. said it yeah maybe Chelsea did TikTok about it I <laughs> like that fair. I like that that makes sense You've, yeah. we do only have a certain capacity for like certain things if you're yeah. not a part of I it. have capacity <laughs> right now for more mum friends yeah yeah I don't have capacity for new friends who aren't parents. So it's the yeah. same thing. I yeah, absolutely. Feel that yeah. That secrecy is taken. It is very much. Because also, yeah. like, the thing about making friends when you have a child is that there are setups, you know, school, nursery, mm-hmm. postnatal clubs, prenatal clubs, baby I don't know, clubs, baby, baby clubs, clubs, all these things. Yeah. But meeting your kind of person who's also got a kid your age must be a bit more difficult. Yeah. And mm. someone like near you as well. That's mm. another like London thing as well. It's just like, everyone lives so far, far away. Okay. Has Hannah, having had a baby, changed your ideas around having kids in any way? You, no. No, but it's reaffirmed that I'm like, I don't have whatever Hannah has. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm watching her parent and I'm like, whatever the special source is, I ain't got it. And that's yeah. okay, that's not, I think some people want to reassure me. They're like, no, I think you could do it. And I'm like, it's not a bad thing that I don't have those qualities. Yeah. I just have other ones. I don't yeah. know what they are. <laughs> but like, it's just reaffirmed for me, my decision. We just don't have that. There's a drive that you need to want to I've be a mother. Always You've known. always had it. Yeah. Yeah. There's She's a drive stubborn. within you. I <laughs> will be a mom. But yeah. like, it's, my sister has it. My sister's just like, she was born knowing that her life will feel slightly less purposeful if she does not have a child. And like, mm-hmm. I don't have that. Mm-hmm. But I also don't have that strong no. But, but has it changed my, my mind? It's made me more reassured, but I've told you this so many times. Yeah, because Rowan is a walking advertisement for having children because he's the best, obviously. Yeah. There's no he guarantee is. of that you could have no. the devil incarnate, just but, say. So, <laughs> kidding, kidding, no, this, that, is, that is my big fear. And also- you don't know what kind of child you're gonna get. Specifically, seeing you and Dan parent together makes me really reassured for the future. Dan, exceptional parent in my opinion. As as you are, yeah. obviously, well, obviously you're Having amazing. Out of 10, Thank you. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. No, Dan isn't the case of like doing the bare minimum and getting all of the praise though. So no. yeah, no, he definitely puts in the work. Right. Yeah. This is an interesting one. <laughs> Any life choices you avoid discussing as you're making different ones, e.g. climate wise. And I'm Ooh. interpreting this question as like the choice to have kids re the climate. That might not be what this person is asking, but this is a thing that I just want to put to fucking bed. If I wanted to try, I really genuinely had the calling to have a child. Knowing what I know about the climate, I would still have a child. Thank you. So it's not a contradictory thing. Yeah. And when I think about the climate, I think about Rowan. And how I'm cleaning Cause up the like, air. Because like, who him. else are yeah. we making the climate better for, if not the next generation? And then the other thing I think of, as soon as you start to get into like murky waters of population control, you shouldn't have kids. It's just eugenics. Yeah. Completely. It's just yeah. a quick route down that. And it's just like, let's just let people have reproductive freedom I just feel yeah. like it's not like you're encouraging people to be in a in a baby making cult like <laughs> you're not like well I don't know did you see her earlier with you I think there was some definite <laughs> come on Lucy one of us, oh. one of us. <laughs> but you know like your max you're gonna have like four kids Robs what mm. two yeah exactly I'm um, I don't know obviously there's a huge impact on the climate I want to know now is there anything else that you'd think oh I don't want to discuss that with Hannah with wait I'm who am I we're all one body <laughs> in Christ um <laughs> Is it, do you think, is there anything I don't want to discuss with Lena and Lucy or Luna? 
No, I think I think I'm like, oh, they might get a bit bored by the nap chat if I like go too deep into the details of of that. And because it's like controlling my life to some degree, I can't help myself like slip into talking about the details of that. And then I hear myself and I'm like, I'm fucking boring myself. I find this all really interesting. I think if I think if you only talked about it, it'd be boring. Yeah. Here's my thing. I wouldn't watch a vlog from a mum I didn't know talk about her sleep schedule or anything to do with her motherhood. But it's you. And in the same way that not that motherhood is an illness but when you were ill <laughs> I wanted to hear about how you were doing and how that was affecting your day mm-hmm, and how that was mm-hmm. affecting your sleep schedule so why yeah. wouldn't I want to hear that about you parenting yeah because it's something that's affecting you and I care about you it, yeah it's just like a funny thing I'm just like I will say boring. that the thing that one of the things that is coming up here very clearly is that you are a very conscientious parent or, or you're very conscientious of your relationships with people as you are a parent mm. and not everyone is as conscientious as you maybe and maybe that's why we find the maintenance of our relationship much easier maybe than we do with I others I think well I don't censor myself in terms of like if I want to talk about Rowan I'll talk about Rowan I'll be like do you want to see all these p- pictures like I'm not going to restrict myself in that way but also like just want to talk about other stuff as well yeah <laughs> like, maybe it's just your personality and our personality and your personality hasn't changed and our personality yeah, hasn't changed so thus we like yeah, each other yeah. this one's an interesting one how do you deal with comparing life stages and feeling like you're behind on some life achievement Ooh. We are maybe not the people to ask about that. I don't, well, you guys answer for yourselves, but I feel ahead of the game for oh, my age sick. and people tell me yeah. it a lot and it actually makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> oh, <there we laughs> oh, no, no, it's fine. It's because, you know, how lucky I am, it, yeah. you know. I also think that you're a lot wiser than a lot of Is this video age? just us all complimenting oh, each yeah. other? <laughs> Amazing, mashing it. Do you know what? I think there's only one point in which I felt like my life was behind your guys' lives Ooh. and that's when I had an office night to five job mm. and then I was also doing YouTube on the side and you guys were both like full time YouTube like, no oh, way. but it wasn't it was more like a insecurity thing and then also it was kind of helpful because it made me be like oh well, obviously if I'm feeling this then I definitely want to and yes. look at you now yeah. do you know what and sometimes you need just a bit of that like envy motivation yeah it's so I think it's healthy when you channel yeah. it you can be like I can turn this into resentment or I can turn this into a plan yeah oh. literally we love a plan um, how do you stop constant comparison and FOMO. Yeah, I don't know who this is aimed at exactly. I feel but like I'll you. answer it. Yeah. I sometimes struggle with this. I feel like with you two specifically, I'm very jealous of your hobbies and I'm very jealous of your social life. <laughs> Oh, no. like, really interesting. And uh, but it's also one of those things of like I made my choice and actually it's really lovely to see the two of you thriving in those ways and I know with parenting everything is a phase everything changes like these first five years are going to be some of the hardest in terms of like stealing my time but then after that I can have some more hobbies and after that I can have a bit more of a social life but it's just like one of those things where I just, I just have to wait a little bit do you know how reassuring it is to hear that you're jealous of of my social life because I was convinced when I got sober that my social life was going to die. I hope you're having a great time. Which, I am. Which of my but hobbies are you jealous of? Just the existence of them. Not like, <laughs> not that right. I would want to have your specific hobbies. You just seem like you're having a great time. Yes. I made oh. an octopus out of felt the other day. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that has to be the beginning of this video. <laughs> I made an octopus I'll out of pearl. Please, Please do. do. My friend had a baby, but he lives in a different country and I never see him. How can we stay connected? I have one best friend, Melanie, who lives in a different country and also had her first baby during the pandemic. So, you know, we rarely see each other. Technology is your friend. The voice notes, the random FaceTimes, that's literally it. And then like when we can, putting a weekend in the diary when we see each other. There's my advice. <laughs> Done. 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 Oh. Do you feel dynamics change when slash if you don't like said friend's partner? Yes, <gasps> absolutely. Here's the thing though, on, I don't feel like I know that? Jack well enough mm. to hate him. But she's working <laughs> on it. <laughs> oh my God. But you, Well, I guess it depends, doesn't it actually? I said yes, very blanket, but like if you're only seeing them with their partner, which also is just not right in yeah, general. If you can, that. that's bad vibes. No. Oh my God, vibes again. <laughs> 
thing. It's bad. Like, when I don't gel with somebody's partner, which hasn't happened to either of yours, so we're, yeah. we're, we're in the clear, we're going to be looking for goss. If for me, it's a learning moment. It'd be like, there's obviously a part of them that I don't know very well. Mm-hmm. Because some mm-hmm. part of them really yeah. gels with this person, mm-hmm. and I don't know that part of them. So either I make peace with that, because you never know the whole of somebody anyway, or you're like, that's interesting. I'd like to know that part of them better. Then maybe I'll understand their partner more. Like, what am I yeah. missing about my friend? Yeah. I also think it's actually a very, very positive thing when your partners are very different in a friendship group. It's a bit annoying in terms of when you all have to hang out, whether they gel or not. But for some reason, I just think it tends to work better. If everyone fancies the same kind of person, I feel like it's very weird. Yeah, be swapping become, partners. You <laughs> risk become redundant as a friend because you're like, oh, your, your partner's fulfilling what I fulfill in your life because we're really similar people. Yeah. I, I remember so, I one of my that. best friends at uni, the guy that she was going out with who is now her husband, me and him, I was going to say, got on so well. Still get on so well, but I saw him a lot more when we were at uni and just such good friends that she literally was like if we ever break up like you'll still be my friend right I was like yeah don't worry like you were here first (laughs) (laughs) controlling envy slash insecurity when your life paths are different we kind of did yeah Yeah. but if you're feeling that way it is hard and I'm sorry and you're doing great everything is temporary everything is always moving forwards life isn't a path calm down you can't you can't be too fun it's a wiggly line you're you're thinking tiny wimmy wibbly wobbly it's not a deep (laughs) this is a cool question favorite part about having different lives from each other be pretty fucking boring if they were the same yeah that we get to dip in and, and enjoy everyone else's versions of life I don't know lives are that different no That's I actually just, agree I, yeah, I agree maybe, yeah, maybe. I think we watch the same kind of TV shows I think we absorb the same kind of social mm. media I think we have we have very similar jobs alright well there we go <laughs> Never mind. I like learning about um, Hannah's connection to Judaism. Oh, I've yeah. It's very tenuous. Really. It's very <laughs> weak. <laughs> but it's interesting. As, as weak as it is. And I wouldn't um, say that's like a defining thing that I get from the friendship, though. I know, but I've, and I've also learned a lot about addiction from you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I enjoy when Rowan is, like, pretending to drive a car or looking at trains. He goes, choo-choo, choo-choo. But in the way he says it, it sounds like, choo-choo, choo-choo. <laughs> and I love it. Oh my god. Driving at home. Side note. Oh. I'm like, yes, baby, you are a little Jew. <laughs> Earn your German passport. <laughs> oh, I just applied for his actually. Oh, oh. yeah. It's happened. I get him in the EU. <sighs> It will make his life so much easier, hopefully. Anyway, wholesome question. What's your fave part of seeing Hannah as a mum? Full disclosure, Hannah sent us this question (laughs) yesterday because it made her happy. (laughs) I cried thinking about what they would say. I'm now this lot of pressure. Yeah, now I'm... I know, I I can't cry on demand, so I'm probably not going to cry now. Where was it? So the question So what's your favourite part of seeing me as a mum? Give it to me. I think it's nice when you you know somebody has wanted for a really, really long time. Like, because we knew that you wanted kids before you'd even met dad. Mm -hmm. and when you see somebody you love get what they want and then know that it is definitely what they want as well like I feel like this part (laughs) of the glee of you raising Rowan is that you're also like yeah I do really love this confirmed confirmed. no regrets (laughs) yeah I remember I started crying when I held Rowan because it was you know you'd you'd gone through it like you'd yeah. gone through it and then you had your baby yeah. and, and that's it was just like so a momentous. special moment for me as well like the first time like introducing your like new fresh little baby to your friends mm. yeah and i think cute. as well and, and this was like talked about at your wedding though like seeing you so ill before mm. and because i think i came mm. to see you just just as you got out of hospital, I don't think you even remember it. <laughs> Who knows? Right, yeah, but you, you were, were really, really unwell. And to see you go from that to having a healthy enough body to make another body. Yeah. Yes, and to care for that body and, and to have recovered from, from the ordeal of having a baby. Yeah, honestly, it's confirmed for me why your fertility like peaks in your 20s because you're more likely to be like much more physically fit and able to do pregnancy and look after a child when you're younger. It's so physically demanding. Mm. So physically demanding. Me. And um, also I would say, I said this, I said this over text, but it has been so reassuring watching you parent in the same way, weirdly, that it was really reassuring when I thought I might be a full-time creator mm. and watching you navigate it about a year or two ahead of me made me feel like I could do it. And mm. seeing the way that you parent, you're your dynamic with Dan, your dynamic with Rowan, and how you have gone into it and the way you adapt and deal with things, I find that immensely reassuring because it looks fun and good and nice. Oh, well, that's the only parts I'm showing you now. Yeah. <laughs> 
you know, it feels <laughs> it feels tackleable. Yeah, but well, that's the thing, like and rewarding, yeah. and yeah, cool. And your life still looks rich and beautiful and warm and great. All of those things. Love that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> What's your favorite thing about getting to hang out? I think just getting to hang out. Yeah, getting to just hang out. Getting to hang I think out. it's Spend really time with easy to hang out with you both. Maybe because we've done it so much that it, there's no yeah. thing. But I just think that when you can really re- relax around people, you could say an off-color joke, or, yeah. <laughs> or you can be a bit quiet and you don't feel like they're gonna be weird about it. Oh my god, yeah, definitely. Nice. I think it's really lovely as well that like there's some friends now as I get into my late 20s oh my god I feel like everything I've said today is a dig at someone or something or like a side eye I don't know maybe maybe I am as I get older I notice the friendships that are not working Mm. but I guess by extension the friendships that naturally work yeah I don't even think about it's just like it's natural and I feel like that is us I feel like I've got no insecurity about our friendship no and the status and I don't yeah I don't feel like either of you has changed or like we our values don't align or you don't understand me or like you know when we have differing opinions I can completely see why each of you has those opinions and it doesn't feel like a judgment Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah. what if one of your best friends hates babies one of my best friends does hate babies and I do actually worry for our frindship (laughs) slightly when when that to hate a baby literally like like, I hate cats and dogs but I'm civil around people who <laughs> have yeah, cats like, and dogs. I'm kind of like, I understand if you're somebody who, who finds it stressful to spend a lot of time around a baby. Yeah, or struggle but I think to get hating a baby needs it. to be unpacked because yeah. you're an innocent bo- In the same way that you don't hate a dog. My hope is that my sight, friend unpacks it. I think that's the thing to unpack. We are still young as well. Yeah. And like, you can joke and be like, oh, I hate babies, but I don't really, like, I don't mean that. I mean, I don't want to be a mother. It's very different. You know, yeah. when someone sees a dog who doesn't know how to be around dogs and is kind of afraid of them and that literally mean. gives them the widest birth. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's my I've friend. I've had a lot of exposure to babies. <laughs> See, they're not that bad, are they? In terms of actual advice on what to do about that, Mm. it will work itself out. But but also, like, there is going to be a spectrum amongst your friends of people who are so into babies and, you know, will want to come around and hang out with your baby all the time and then to people who are just not interested. Mm. And, yeah, it's just kind of the reality of it. Like, some people just aren't into babies and I'm kind of like, that's fine. When I was growing up, like, my childhood best friend had a baby when we were 16 Mm. and then the next flood was at 22, 23, 24 all of my school friends had babies so I'm like there's always oh. been babies you know when people are like oh my god I can't believe that we're having babies yeah. and I'm like, for Look, me we've always been having we collectively have always been having babies and I've just been watching and holding it, them in my That's group why. of friends Dan and I are definitely like some of the first like I don't really you're like probably, one of my last friends yeah That's the, so funny. they're like Midlands Christian <laughs> yeah group. all of your friends are generally like in Manchester or Birmingham or London don't right? have kids so like, yeah, yeah. they're like city city professionals yeah how can you tell if you're being influenced by friends' choices versus what you actually want? I'm hoping that when I want kids, I'm influenced by friends' choices. Ooh. I think the reason I will have children is because my all of my close friends start having them and I'm like, Now is the time. <laughs> It just, yeah. There's also, it, make, it starts to make sense because I don't think I'm ever going to suddenly have the urge. I think also there is no right time to have a kid, like if that's what you want. And so you can kind of, you know, tie yourself in knots trying to figure out when is the perfect time yeah. to do this. And so if you pin it on something arbitrary, like, oh, these other people are, and that's something that we want at some point. So why don't we just start trying now? Like, I'm actually like, that's fine. Like, yeah. if there are external reasons for doing something to help so long you as make you that do decision. Want kids. Then yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, so long as you're sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel certain yeah. and, and you no, don't feel resentment towards said friends should you have no. a kid and then find that hard. No, but I think... I only like, had this child because you guys were having children and then I don't like it. Yeah. I was having this chat with uh, my old housemate Jamaica the other day about how one of her really close friends is having a kid and she's like, I just want to bring all of our children up in this big community. Like, that's mm. what I would love. Like, you know, I'll move to wherever my friends are when I'm having kids because I want to make sure we're all like collectively in it and I'm like it's very idealistic but I do love it like that is the vibe is making sure you're with a community of people and it's you know if you can great I think I would I don't think Dan would <laughs> yeah <laughs> Dan is happy not community he's fair. he's such an introvert oh Hannah do you feel more isolated as the one who has children I think yes I think especially because I work on myself as well I just spend a lot of time alone or just alone with a toddler and yeah it generally is just quite lonely yeah yeah, that is a societal problem, isn't it? Like, I think so. Yeah. It's really frustrating to watch every mum I know experience this like level of loneliness that to some extent I feel like I can help with, but not to a great extent. Yeah. You need like,
like yeah again this like larger level of community yeah I want to be able to and I've had a few moments recently although Lena you weren't privy to this because because you're in the Midlands you didn't get the group text because I was like she can't come (laughs) but Dan was away and I was not feeling it and I was like I need company and the same is happening next week and Lucy is coming over for dinner so it's like I know that if I need the company and I need the support like people will come it is sad that you have to you feel like you have to be like this is a necessity yeah I have to be like I'm not just inviting you around just to like hang out and chill and vibes like although that will hopefully be some of it it's like no 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 I need this this is a like me me doing the like I need my friends to show up for me right now please come (laughs) like that's the vibe I really needed to get my nails done for this photo shoot and I had no baby free time available to do it and I also remember like asking me like can anybody come to this nail salon with me just to like watch Rowan whilst I get my nails done and Dodie came and that was great and so it's like there's these like nice moments of like even if I don't get to see my friends all that often when I do reach out and ask for help like people are like yep I'll be there you're very good at communicating stuff like that because we're as you said you're kind of in this like group the first one to have kids Mm. and we're also learning as well like I remember we were talking maybe like two or three weeks ago and I was like you're superwoman and you were like really appreciate you saying this but please don't use that term like it's so annoying and I was like amazing thank you I'm educated yeah and I like I hate confrontation but actually I was like do you know what actually in this moment like it's not confrontation it's It's literally just me being like this is something you don't know because you don't have the same experience as me and there's you know that goes for so many different experiences and I was like just FYI is that the equivalent of a guy saying you look so much better without makeup it's like oh I knew you meant it as a compliment but it's not it's it's kind of like a lot of people call mums like super women and the thing that grinds my gears about that is that we don't want to be we yeah. want help and support but people are like look at her she's doing all of these things all by herself isn't she so amazing it's like I don't want to be fucking doing all this by myself like can somebody please help me so it's it kind of like absolves people of any responsibility to actually like step up because they're just like you're doing great hun and then they leave so true it's yeah, the it's have it all fun. women yeah uh, that's how it feels me. to me so when Lucy called me a superwoman I very politely what's your stood. preferred compliment <laughs> you're trying so hard <laughs> That sounds really good. Yeah. Like, she tries. She Hannah, tries. How is Hannah's mum? She tries. She tries. You do really, um, really well. But I, yeah, I know what you mean. I think, yeah, I mean, I don't know. Just tell me I'm doing great. <laughs> and that you're here you are. for me. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, how do you set boundaries with these friends about when your child is slash isn't invited? So a friend of mine's getting married next year and I have to do the like, a kid's invited? Like a children welcome? And she'll be like, yes. And I'm like, okay, if kids are welcome, these are the like accommodations that I need. And she's like, oh, I wouldn't know that. So there's also this yeah. element element of like whilst they'll be like yeah it'll be so great and fun to have kids around I'm like okay but they're gonna need a high chair and like how close is the reception venue to the accommodation because we might need to like do that journey and like will they sleep there there's like so many like logistical things that like if kids are aren't invited that parents have to navigate that people who don't have kids are completely oblivious to which is fine because I was completely oblivious to them before as well but I think there's a lot of like communication and bridging that gap that we need to do when it comes to like those kinds of things where people are invited, kids are invited in terms of actually being like, what do you need? Yeah, But then also the parents being like, this is what I need. If I don't get these things, I can't come. That's something that I hope will get better because it's also the same conversation around accessibility and yeah. and just yeah. considering what people need if yeah, they yeah, need yeah. to attend somewhere. Yeah. yeah. And like, also, yeah, knowing whether your kid's invited fully and then you're like, okay, cool. How much does this wedding mean to me? And what what is the logistics of me dropping Rowan off at my parents for the two nights and or one yeah. night or whatever? Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of a lot of logistics. Communication. This question is for Lena. Oh. Do you worry about loneliness in your old age? This person is also child free, but they fear regret. No, I don't. But I do think that there's a lot of people not having kids, and I don't think that people who have kids won't be good company for me. Yeah. I think the people who are closing themselves off and own like becoming like character of mum will be, but I don't see that as a barrier. I don't worry. Also, when I think about like my parents and their social life now I'm like as soon as my kids have left home I'll be like Lena <laughs> let's go let's do and activities like, together. Mom, let's say you're in a care home when you're old 
It's gonna be so cool. It's gonna be like uni all over again. I'm so jealous of my godmother who lives in a care home. I'm like, oh. and she's always like going down for tea with all of her friends, and they leave all their flat doors open. It looks amazing. Oh my god, I've never thought about care homes in that. Way I'm so excited about it. I think it's gonna be so good. I'm gonna run so many socials. The I think moment maybe you start scarred. seeming weary, we'll like send her to a care home. Yeah, <laughs> and I'll be like, wheel me in. I've got my bingo wheel ready. So three of my four grand, no, all of my grandparents went into care before they passed in four very different contexts. And I will say that you can be as close as you think you are with your children. You do not know who's going to visit you and how frequently. Mm, you will well. not know. Like it is so varied. And so it's having so kids dependent isn't on a guarantor of not being lonely. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, effectively. <laughs> and you don't, yeah, man, your kid might hate you when you're Please adult. Please don't. It, it depends man. how you're spending your time as well because I feel like I'm spending some of the time I might do on that and finding more people and community and building things where I live I hope mm. that I'll do that in my 40s and 50s is spend that time that I would have done child rearing on building a cult that I joined <laughs> that you yeah. were you know what I mean like just building community and other connections yeah definitely okay how to maintain the friendship with busy schedules slash living in different places and life stages my main thing is just being realistic about like what it is that you want out of the friendship and like we're quite low maintenance pals and mm. so it's just kind of like I'm still here we group chats fucking love a good group chat yeah but we ultimately it's just like expectation managing expectations and also meeting with a purpose is very nice like we meet every quarter definitely Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we talk about work but like it's a long extended work chat effectively and troubleshooting and then on top of that maintenance comes from our group chat and sending silly voice notes and generally like our like work but yeah and we see each other extends as well i think also like every time you meet make sure you've got another date in the diary before you leave yes yes Yes. that's what we do yeah you have to get another date in while you're with that person. Yeah. Are either of you sad that I'm not gonna have kids? Yeah, no. so little. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I would. I think that's you're just amazing, and I'd love another one of you in the world. But it wouldn't but be another one of that's me. Selfish. That's, that's selfish. That's not how it works. See, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm selfishly glad you're not having kids because to me that means that we're less likely to grow apart, especially because you live in a different place now, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you can be an amazing auntie to Rowan. Yeah, I have without no being distracted by your own children yeah I've got time to knit yeah there you go so uh, so I'm selfishly like oh great if she doesn't have kids then she's got more time for me yeah, yeah. <laughs> great. and I do I love all my friends so much and love the idea of them all having children even though the actual reality of that is just it's not as beautiful and lovely as you think probably like everyone would be different levels of parent and different anyway vibes yeah because um, yeah. I'm excited for if when you have kids i would be like I'm fucking ready Lucy ask me anything mate you but will, then you'll never hear the end of it <laughs> I was going to send you like a file of fact home yeah. of like all of her advice and all of the No, but here's the up. thing. I actually think that it's really useful to have other parent friends, but who are like relatively close to you in terms of stage. I can't remember what was happening six months ago. If you mm. have a kid in the next five years and you're like, Hannah, what's normal in terms of like baby poos? I'd be like, I don't fucking know. Like I'm doing the school run. Yeah, like, do you yeah. know what I mean? Like there is an element of like, I don't know, once you're a bit, further along in your parenting journey I actually think it might then be harder to relate to new parents Mm. because you don't remember it and you could accidentally say like patronizing things like everyone says the days are long but the years are short or like it's not easier or more difficult it's just different and you're like great so there is an element of like me being super excited to impart my wisdom but I might not be the best person for that right we're gonna leave it there thank you so much for watching this chaos there may potentially be an extended cut of this on my patreon we'll see because <laughs> i feel knows? like i've always been on this sofa <laughs> yeah we've been here for so long we're supposed to be actually doing <gasps> business work. Work. is it one o'clock it's one o'clock i need bed i need to yeah pump, i need and we to, need to have lunch drugs. yeah and that <laughs> we, sorry we all have our needs yes. okay <laughs> i drugs, pump. pumping to clarify i have a tooth infection <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for sending in your questions. I would love to hear all of your thoughts in the comments about your experiences navigating friendships and those dynamics with some having kids and some not. We are but three people who, as we have established, are still quite similar and like each other very much. So you might have some different, spicier experiences than us. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We love a banging book club reunion and see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye. Bye.